The microphone that you're listening to me on right now is the Lewitt LCT240 Pro, which I've had for several years at this point. And even though I'm fortunate enough to have quite a few microphones now, this is probably one of the best, if not the best sounding one that I own. I think it's probably the most underrated microphone that I own. And it's one that I don't use very often. So let's check out this microphone, compare it against a couple others, and I'll explain why I don't use it as often as I'd like to, even though it's really one of the best sounding ones that there is. So first, let's look at a few basics of this microphone, which might help you understand why I think it's underrated, starting with the price. It retails for $159, which is a very good price in the world of microphones. It's a condenser microphone, so you're not going to need any boosters, anything like that, basically any interface, or mixer that has phantom power will be able to power this microphone and get you great results. Right now, I am running it into the Rodecaster Pro 2 with no effects and no processing, just on the generic condenser setting. But if you run it through any other interface like a Focusrite Scarlett or a Vocaster or a Rode AI-1, anything that has phantom power, you're going to get this same level of audio quality. And I know that because I have run it through all kinds of different interfaces in the several years since I first bought this microphone. I'm using the Rodecaster 2 today because it just makes it a little easier for comparisons and way easier to record since it's just got onboard recording. So if you're thinking that this microphone is only sounding good because it's going through an expensive mixer, not the case, it will sound like this through anything because it's a really good microphone. And that $159 not only gets you the condenser microphone, but it also gets you a little mounty thing for it and a windscreen because it is a little bit susceptible to plosives. Peter Piper pitched, maybe I should put this here, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. You can definitely hear plosives. If I pop this windscreen on here now, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. It definitely helps quite a bit. I'm also angling the microphone, so I'm not talking directly into it. It is a side address microphone or the front address, not an end address. You talk into the side with the green logos and stuff. And so right away, this is what you get, which is very, very usable. And Lewitt does promote this microphone. I kind of don't like this as a great first condenser mic, which it is. If you've never used a condenser microphone or even any semi pro microphone before. This is a great first one. And it, they kind of promote it as like, it's a great place to start. But this thing I have put head to head against so many other microphones over the years. And this one kind of always wins. For $159, this is what you get. However, there's a few things I don't like about this. The windscreen works really well, but I love the design of this microphone. Yes, I know I'm listening with my eyes and not with my ears by saying that, but I really do like the way that it looks. There's also a black version. I just really like the white version. It's really well made. It's made out of metal, but the way that the finish is put on here, it feels almost like it's ceramic. And I really, really love the visuals here. But as we heard before, you kind of do need a pop filter or a windscreen just to help make sure you're not overloading it with plosives and stuff. And these little kinds of mounts here aren't my favorite. And as you're probably hearing, it is a bit susceptible to handling noise. So. You know, you have to be kind of careful with it, but if you're moving things around, if I'm typing on the table, you're definitely gonna hear that noise. So I think a shock mount is required, shockingly enough. And fortunately, Lewitt does make a really great shock mount for this microphone specifically. I can move this around now without having any real handling noise. It's even doing a pretty good job of absorbing the tapping on the table and everything. Of course, for me, most of the time when I'm using a microphone, at least in here, I'm always using it on a boom arm, so that even helps absorb things more. If you add shock mount plus boom arm, then you get amazing results. But since I like the design of the microphone, I don't want to cover it up with this windscreen. Lewitt also makes this really awesome metal mesh pop filter, which has magnets on the bottom. This part is plastic, this part is metal, and it magnetically attaches to the shock mount. So it just slides over the microphone right there. And now Peter Piper pitched a podcast. This has been a great pop filter. In my experience, I have no problems with it. I have full confidence in it. Even times when I'm not monitoring with headphones, I know that my audio is going to sound fine when I'm using this pop filter. So I really, really like it. And I really like this setup. Now, of course, this does raise the price of the microphone because the mic itself is $159, but the shock mount is $35, $40. And the, the pop filter kind of varies in price between 30 and $50, it's sort of all over the place. So when all is said and done to get this specific setup with microphone, metal mesh, magnetic pop filter and shock mount, it's really more about a $250 microphone. But that's obviously totally up to you if you want to do that right out of the box with the windscreen and the mount, you can start using the microphone right away with any tabletop stand or any boom arm. 
And that's awesome. Now, when I mentioned Lewitt marketing this as a great first condenser microphone, they do have higher end microphones like the LCT 440 and just fancier ones. But this one just is, is something really special, I think. And of course, different microphones do sound different on different voices, but we even did a microphone shootout on my wife's channel a while ago, like over a year ago. And as soon as she started talking into the Lewitt, people loved it. We did another shootout on my channel a few months ago. And again, for both of us, me and her, a male and a female voice, people preferred the Lewitt like overwhelmingly compared to everything else that I was putting it up against. Yeah, so 21 to 79. This one got 79, that one got 21. 21 to 79. This one was kind of a clear winner. I even recently did a multi-episode like microphone showdown thing on my podcast where I was trying to find the perfect microphone. I was doing A-B tests. And ultimately this Lewitt was the one that not only did I think sounded absolutely the best, but also everyone listening thought that it sounded the best. This has sort of been almost like a secret weapon where I know every time I use it, every time I connect it, it's going to get favorable results, not just from me, but from people who are actually listening. And that's a big deal if your audience likes what they hear. So with all that in mind, why on earth am I not using this microphone all the time as much as I want to? That really comes down to an issue that's kind of specific to my setup, but I think it's worth sharing because I don't think my setup's that unusual. But if this is not an issue for you, then this could be the perfect microphone for you. And that just has to do with how you position the microphone. So as I mentioned, I like using a boom arm for my microphones. As you can kind of see here in the shock mount, because the microphone has like this rectangular shape, it sort of has a unique shaped shock mount, which means you can't turn the microphone when it's in your shock mount. Some other microphones in their shock mounts, especially if you have to talk to the side of them, you can sort of just turn them without turning the shock mount and have the microphone face you. So even if the mic's coming in from the side, you can still position it so it's facing where you want it to face. This one, you cannot do that. So if I have it connected to a boom arm, it's basically just always facing this way, and it can be very difficult depending on boom arm length and my position, to get the microphone positioned exactly where I want it. Unfortunately, I really wish there were a boom arm like this PSA One Plus here that just had a nice pivot action right here, like some really strong toothed gears or something that let you like lock it down into like a horizontal axis here. So that way you could put the mic out here, rotate it towards you and then position it that way. That would be awesome. I don't personally know of any boom arms that do that, but maybe there are some out there that aren't insanely expensive. I've tried using different ball heads. I've tried using all kinds of adapters to sort of rig up something, and I've gotten it kind of working, but just the way boom arms work, if the weight gets off a little bit, then the microphone can tip and start unscrewing, and it's just sort of become more trouble than it's worth. And so even though this is probably about the best sounding microphone that I have, at least on my voice, I really don't use it that much because it's not as easy to use. It would be easy if you have it on a tabletop stand like this, which I do avoid because it's just, it's kind of in the way. You know, I'm gonna bump the tabletop stand. It's gonna be more prone to picking up sounds from the desk and whatnot. Or if you have a boom arm that's just coming straight in front of you, which I don't have because there's a camera straight in front of me and it looks weird if the boom arm is kind of coming like this. It, it just doesn't work right. So positioning is a little bit tough. If you're somebody like me and you have your boom arm sort of off to one side, getting this microphone positioned where you need it can be a little tricky. Now, you might be saying, but Tom, the mount that it comes with lets you just, you could just twist the microphone with the setup that the microphone comes with, not buying the extra shock mount, not buying the extra pop filter, but just like this, I could attach this to a boom arm and then turn the microphone there, lock it down, and now I can have the microphone facing me while it's coming out a different direction that kind of solves the problem which is true, except that then I can't use the shock mount, so it's going to be more susceptible to that handling noise, and I can't use the pop filter that I like because this needs to be magnetically attached to the shock mount and not the microphone itself. If I take this off, it will just, it just sort of falls there. It doesn't actually stick to the microphone, and I really like the way that this works and the way that this looks better than the default windscreen. So what that means for me is in order to position this mic where I need to use it, I'm always making some kind of compromise. Either I have to not use the setup that I want, this shock mount and this pop filter, or I have to not position the mic where I want. I have to use a tabletop stand or a boom arm coming from an uncomfortable direction or something. And that's why I just don't use it as much as I would like to. But if those aren't issues for you, if that's not a problem for your setup, then that could not be an issue at all. And you could use this microphone for everything. And there are a lot of pros to the LCT240 Pro. And now I will share my pros on those pros 
Anyway, it really is an impressive microphone. If you kind of look at the capsule inside, right off the bat, it doesn't really look like anything special. It's a little bit bigger and nicer than like a super cheap capsule that you would find in something like an NW700 or 800, but it's nothing like the amazing and big capsule that you'll find in something like the NT1 from Rode or other condenser microphones, but it really doesn't matter because this thing sounds so so good. I do have a few other microphones to compare it to. Not that I want to turn this into a huge long comparison because I th I've learned that that can get a little fatiguing and then it's hard to make any kind of decisions. I do have some really great sounding microphones in similar price points, except for this one. So I have the Rode NT1. This is usually about $180, so kind of similar in price. It's another condenser microphone. And I've got the neat King B2, which is also about that like 160 ish dollar price point. Although sometimes this goes on sale for absurd discounts. This is a very big microphone, but it's a great one. It also comes with a shock mount that I just too lazy to take down from over there. And it does let you position it in different ways, but this is so, this is like, you could totally like get a workout in with this microphone, but let's just compare. Again, same settings and everything. This is the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. That's what you're listening to me on right now. And this is the neat King B2. I also do think that this is an underrated microphone. It might not be fair to call it underrated because it's relatively new at the time I'm recording this. This hasn't even been out for a year yet. And, and I'm also just being lazy and hand holding it. It is not supposed to be a handheld microphone. But this thing is really impressive, and in, in the microphone shootouts and live streams that I've done, this one has also ranked incredibly favorably. But this is the neat King B2, which as you can believe, is a neat microphone. All right, and now we're back on the LCT240 Pro before switching over to the Rode NT1. And this is the Rode NT1, even though Lewitt markets the LCT240 Pro as a great first condenser microphone, this was my first condenser microphone, my actual first one. I've had this for several years now, and I really, really love the way that this microphone sounds. There's also a few different versions of the NT1. There's the NT1A, which has a slightly different pickup pattern. I think they all sound amazing. The only downside, Peter Piper pitched a podcast, as you can probably tell, is it's quite susceptible to plosives, and it's it's actually not too bad with handling noise. It's not a handheld microphone. I always have it in a shock mount with a windscreen on it. But if I even just pop this over here, then Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Now we have the NT1. This kind of did take down some of the frequencies. I do think that this is also an amazing sounding microphone, but it's probably worth the reminder that any microphone also depends on your specific voice and your specific environment. And now we're back again on the LCT240 Pro, and this time we're gonna to switch to something a little different. This is also a condenser microphone, but this is the Earthworks Ethos, which used to be like an $800 microphone, and then Earthworks knocked the price down to $400. So it is in a very different price category, but I think it's fun to see how the Lewitt does compare to something that's in a higher price category. So this is the Lewitt, and this right here is the Earthworks Ethos. In my big microphone shootout that I've done over the past few months, this sort of ended up being the winner, not just in terms of sound quality, but also in terms of usability. It's very, very easy to position and adjust exactly where you need it and from any angle, basically. And that is really important to me because I don't really care how great something sounds if it's not super easy to use and incorporate into my workflow. But this is the Earthworks Ethos. I think this is an absolutely amazing microphone. I do have a whole video about this and also the Earthworks Icon, which is quite iconic. And now we're back on the Lewitt. Everything we've compared it to has been a condenser microphone that runs on phantom power. But just because it is so popular, I do wanna compare it to the SM7B. It's not a condenser microphone, it's a dynamic microphone. It's not in the same price point. It's also a $400 microphone, so it's really more directly in line price-wise with the Ethos. But for the sake of reference, this is the LCT240, the Lewitt, and this is the Shure SM7B running into the Rodecaster Pro 2. I did have to boost the gain by 30 decibels just to get a decent signal with this because it does require a lot more gain than any of these condensers do. So where I said that any of these condenser microphones are going to get great results through any interface as long as it has phantom power, that is absolutely not the case for the SM7B. You do need a decent interface or a decent booster in order to get a signal that is usable and sounds good from the SM7B. SM7B. It's a great microphone if you want to add EQ to it. You can probably hear compared to sort of some of the others. It might even sound a little bit muddy right now, at least to my ears, it kind of does. But that's, I don't think, a default. That's because it's just 
ready to be EQ'd. You can take this, you can put it on just about any voice and then adjust it so it sounds good on just about any voice, which is one of the reasons it's been so popular for so long, believe it or not, even before Joe Rogan used it. And one thing about the SM7B that is SM7B leavable, the handling noise is amazing. So I'm just hand holding it. It's not supposed to be a handheld mic. So when you have this mounted to a stand or a boom arm and you're moving it around or people are grabbing while they're talking, this has like no handling noise. And I think that's something that's probably not appreciated enough about the SM7B because when you have it, you just sort of take it for granted and you just move your microphone around. But then when you start using another microphone that's a little more susceptible to handling noise, you realize, oh, I can't touch this at all because it's going to totally ruin the sound of everything. And one more microphone, one more microphone. Several months ago when I did my microphone shootout, the thing that started was the Blue Sona because I really love the way this microphone sounds. It's a $350, $360 microphone. It's clearly a competitor to the SM7B and I have a video that really talks about that a lot. But the difference between the Sona is that it has, but the difference with the Sona is that even though it is a dynamic microphone, it has a built-in booster. So it needs phantom power in order to run, but that means you're going to be able to get a decent signal through any interface, just like a condenser microphone. So if you like dynamic microphones and you like the way this sounds and you don't wanna to have to deal with boosters or crazy preamps or whatever, just you can use this with anything and it's going to sound great. My video with the SM7B shows that because as we start putting these through less fancy and less expensive interfaces, the Sona continues to sound great while the SM7B falls apart really quickly. And so it really kind of came down to me, these three microphones here, I love the sound of the Sona. And then I immediately ended up getting the ethos sort of unexpectedly, which I also really liked the sound of. And I didn't know what was going between these two. So I was trying to do a shootout and then I was bringing in all my other microphones. And ultimately it was the friggin' Lewitt <laughs> that everyone loved more than even the other microphones that I liked. But just for reference, here is the blue Sona, which I really like also Hey, it's got the same color scheme as the Lewitt right now, but it does also come in a black version and you can, you can change the color of the windscreen or the pop filter, which is neat. And now we're back on the Lewitt LCT240 Pro, which even just in my headphones monitoring this, this sounds so good to me without any EQ. There's no processing. You could take the signal and you could adjust it. I'm always impressed by how great and how just easy to listen to this microphone is. And I think that's something too, is ear fatigue. Sometimes you might hear audio that sounds decent, but after two or three minutes of listening to it, you kind of get tired or it becomes unpleasant. This is a microphone that just always sounds nice to listen to and it's so affordable. It's just the limits of how you mount the microphone that don't always make it. My freaking stool is so clicky. If you've been hearing these clicks, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to move my butt too much, but, but it happens. So I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that you knew about this microphone, but the reason I haven't talked about it in the two years that I've had it is I never really knew how to approach this issue. The fact that I love the way it sounds, but I don't use it that often. I figured the easiest way to approach that is just to explain to you why I don't use it that often. And it just comes to how not easy it is for me to mount it in a position that I want it in my specific setup. So even though this is literally a neat microphone, I think that the Lewitt LCT240 Pro is pretty neat. And speaking of things that are neat, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And before we wrap up the video, I will put links in the description to my podcast episodes where I, if you want to hear like the shootouts and stuff, which sort of happened on accident and turned into a thing. And I'll also put links, which you've seen a couple clips to from the live stream that I did with my wife, where we tried to do blind tests and do this like bracketed system to find the best microphone because I do think it's really helpful to hear different voices on different microphones so you can hear how they sound because ultimately that's the most important thing when you're choosing a microphone is how it sounds on your voice. And for a long time, I was scared of condenser microphones because I kind of bought into the thing that they sort of pick up too much room tone and too much environmental no tone. If you need two microphones that are gonna be like super duper close to each other to somebody, then yeah, maybe two SM7Bs or something that's gonna like really eliminate sound that's not right next to it. But beyond that, dynamic condenser, it's just whatever you like. But I hope that makes sense and I hope it kind of uh, encapsulates everything you can do with all of these cool capsules. I don't know how to end this video. Yeah.